Welcome to Easy Limo Learning Simplified. My name is Eric. I'll be taking you through this topic rates, ratio, proportion, and percentages. And for this lesson, we're going to look at decreasing ratio. And uh, in the previous lesson, we looked at increasing ratios, and we were able to discuss that into details. Possibly, if you missed out on that, you haven't checked, you can possibly check on our previous videos on increasing ratios, and you see how that was done. Now we want to look at decreasing ratios and see how to go about it. So we want to see a few questions involving that just to help us with the illustrations on how that can be done. And of course, at the end of the lesson, we'll give you some assignments to help you with practicing, and just to help you gauge on your understanding of the same thing. So what does it mean when we talk about decreasing ratios? So to decrease a quantity in a given ratio, of course, we normally express the ratio. As we saw that in the previous slide on increasing ratios, we simply express the, the, the given ratio. So we simply express the given ratio as a fraction and then multiply that, uh, that, that, that fraction by the given quantity, we'll be able to find the new quantity. So we, we say that if the ratio of a new quantity is expressed, I mean, uh, we have a ratio of new quantity to an old quantity. If this can be expressed as a, 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 a proper fraction, then the new quantity should be less than the old quantity. See, this is just something that will help you gauge whether what you have done is right or wrong. If you can see this one here, if you express this as a fraction, it will be seven over nine. See, this is a proper fraction. So it simply tells you that the, the, the new quantity should be less. For example, this is the quantity that you are trying to reduce. We are expecting that the value we are arriving at should be less than this value here. So that is something that can help you check whether uh, what you are doing is right after you are done with decreasing a particular quantity in that given ratio, you know? Uh, you'll be able to tell whether what you have done is really right or, 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 or wrong, or maybe it's having issues that needs to be fixed before you move on. So applying this decreasing ratio to an old quantity is known as decreasing the old quantity in the given ratio. So the given ratio is what we're calling decreasing ratio. So you want to decrease a particular quantity in this ratio. So the procedure is as highlighted in point number one there, that for us to get the new quantity, for us to find the value of new quantity, we simply take the ratio here, express it as a fraction. Normally, as you express it as a fraction, you are supposed to just pick the first number divided by the second number. So that is going to be 7 over, over 9, and then we multiply by the old quantity, which is 45. So 9 here, 1, 9 there, 5, 5 by 7 is 35. So 45 decreased in the ratio of, I mean, uh, decreased in the ratio of 7 to 9, the answer is 35. So you can see our new value is less as we had hinted previously in the, in the illustration up there. That when you express... So so this is basically how you find the, the decreasing ratio. You take new quantity to the ratio of new quantity to the old quantity. For example, new quantity is 35. So we have 35 to 45. And you can see both of them are divisible by... 5. So you divide uh, 35 by 5, 7, 45 divided by 5 is 9. See how we arrive at the decreasing ratio. This uh, explaining something to do with how we are arriving at that ratio, you know, is the new quantity to an old quantity, which was the same case as the previous uh, discussions on increasing, on increasing ratios. Only that now, when we have this ratio of new quantity to old quantity, and then you express it as a fraction, the new value I mean, we're supposed to be arriving at or uh, ending up with a proper fraction, a fraction whose numerator is less compared to the denominator. You can see 7. Uh, 7 is less compared to the denominator 9. Yes. So we want to try and see, decrease the given numbers in the ratio, in ratio, in the ratio given in the brackets. So we want to decrease this. So... Starting with A here, we're going to have 2 over 5 multiplied by 100. And so 5 goes here, 1, 5 goes there, 20, and that is giving us 40. So again, if you wanted to find that ratio, possibly you're given new value, which is this. The new value is 40, and the original value is 100. And you want to find the decreasing ratio. Then it's some simply new value here, which is 40. So the old value which is 100 and you end up with 2 is to 5. Both of them are divisible by uh, 10. So 4, 10 and then finally divisible by 
by 20, you know, divide 40 by 22, dividing 40 by uh, 100 yeah, by 40, by 20, you end up with 5. So this is called decreasing ratio, this one, the, the 2 to 5. How you arrive at it? New value to the old value that we have up there. So please take note of how we are arriving at that decreasing ratio and how we are using it to find the new value. Possibly if you want to get old value here from the new value, then it will be 5 all over 2 times 40. So old value or old quantity given new value 40. So this will be 5 all over 2 times times 40. Again, this is going to give you 100 because 2 here, 1, 2 there, 20. 20 by 10 is simply 2 by 20. 20 here by 5 is simply 2 by 5 to give us 10 and then you add a 0. You see, this is if you are given the the value, the new value, and then you want to arrive at the old value. So please take note of how you are doing it. To get the new value is the first one divided by the second one. To get the old value is this one here divided by the previous one. So, so take note of how we are arriving at that. So we have uh, 160 here. We want to decre decrease it to the ratio 5 is to 8. So B. So we are trying to find new value. So new value here should be 5 divided by 8 and then you multiply by 160. So 8 goes there 1, 8 goes there 20. 20 by 5 is 100. So if you decrease 160 in the ratio of 5 to 8, you end up with 100, uh, 100 here. Now, we have, uh, how do you arrive at that ratio? Supposedly you had both new value here and you had the old value. What do you do? So ratio will be given by new value. New value to old value. New value to old value. So new value here is 100 and old value is 160. First of all, you divide both of them by 10 and you end up with 10 is to 16 here. And then divide both of them by 2, you end up with 5 is to 8. You see, this is how we find the decreasing ratio. So the formula for finding this ratio is more or less the same as the one we did when we were talking about... Um, increasing ratios so the approach is more or less the same but take note that for you to arrive at the new value it is this five the first one divided by the second one here then times but find the old one if you're given the new one it will be eight over five times the new value here you'll still arrive at the same thing you see arrive at you will arrive back at 160. So let's see this again. We have uh, decreased 60 in the ratio 4 to 5. So we are decreasing still. Again, we need to find new value or new quantity. So new value here is going to be 4 out of 5 by 60. So 5 here, 1, 5 there, 12. Uh, 12 by 4 is 4, 8. You see, so the new value becomes 48. It is less. So supposedly I wanted the, the old value given the new value. See, old value. Because we can give you either old or new. Then you ask the, the other. So old value given new value will be 5 over 4 times the new value, which is 48. And this will still help. Uh, so this is 4 goes here 1, 4 goes there 12 times. 12 by 5 is 60. So this will still lead you to back to the same thing. Now, decreasing ratio. Decreasing ratio. So decreasing ratio will still be given by new value to old to old value. So this is going to be new value is 48. And the old value, the original value, that is what we're calling the old value. You can see this old value here is 60. So both of them are divisible by 12. So 48 divided by 12 is 4. But uh, this one here, 60 divided by 4 is, is uh, I mean, uh, this is 12. 48 here, you divide by 12, you uh, by 4 you 
you get 12 and then 60 you divide by 4 is 15 now both of them are divisible by 3 so maybe you can start by dividing them by 2 successively if that is uh, proving to be confusing so you have 24 to 30 and then finally you have 12 is to 15 and then finally you divide them by 3 because now this is no longer divisible by 2 so divided by 3 is 4 divided by 3 is 5 or just talk of 12 going into 48 i mean four times and 12 going into 60 here five times that will still help you arrive at the final ratio which is four is to five so this is uh something to do with how we find the decreasing ratio you know new value to old value and you see now the first one here so you express you know a case where the first whereby the new value is smaller or, or, or is, is, is less than the the old one then this ratio here expresses a fraction is supposed to be a proper fraction as we have seen in the previous slides now we have uh, this is number four so we have this one here we have uh, the ratio the price of uh, a son's book decreased from 500 to 450 shillings you know what is the decrease ratio you see now so in this case, the decrease ratio here is going to be the new value. So we are moving from 500 to 450. So what's the new value? So the new value becomes 450. So decrease ratio. So decrease ratio is given by new value to old value. So this is going to be our new value. So we are moving from 500 to, so our final destination is this, 450. This becomes our new value. So that is going to be 450 to 500. So this is going to be, first of all, you can decide to divide by, by 10 first. So that I have 45 is to 50. Then now you can decide to divide by, uh, so dividing by 10 to arrive at 45 is to 50. Can again divide it by by five for example so that we have nine and the other side we have ten so this decrease ratio is going to be five i mean nine is to is to ten you see so possibly you could be asked to maybe supposedly you are not given the new value and you want to arrive at the new value then you take nine over ten times times five hundred you see or given the the new value and then you are asked the old value it should be 10 over 9 times times the new value here you see so if you're looking for old it will be 10 over 9 by the new value if you're looking for the new it is the first one over the second one times the first one here yes so that is basically how you need to go about this should this show up in any of the tests that you're going to do or should you have any questions, you can always be posting on the comment section. We look at them and we'll be able to give feedback in the new course. Otherwise, that marks the end. We have a few questions to help you practice on what you have learned through this lesson. You can always attempt to post the response in the comment section. We look at them. We will be able to give you some feedback as time goes by. Otherwise, that marks the end of the lesson. Until next time, goodbye.